Tanya, you are a celebrity cook, a television presenter and a food writer best known for your highly successful shows My Greek Kitchen and My Cypriot Kitchen. When did you realize this is it? Food is my passion, particularly Greek Cypriot cuisine. This is a quite complex question to answer because I tripped into food. Being a Greek Cypriot girl in the UK, I could cook. I mean, that was, that was the rule. You know, you, you can clean a house from top to bottom and you can cook. These are things that you can do and you can make a good Greek coffee. That's, that's, that's the heritage. Whereas most British girls, most English girls, I mean, honestly, they couldn't do a cheese on toast. So I was cooking from a very young age. I was cooking for my friends as well from a young age. So I always could cook and I always loved television. I loved presenting, I loved television, I loved travel. And I liked informative, entertaining television. So you're watching something, it, you're enjoying watching it, but actually you're also learning something from it. And so I tried lots of different angles to do it. And what I did realize is that no one really was doing a program about Greek food, or Cypriot food in particular, because everyone was doing Italy, France, Asia, there was loads of things like that going on, but there was not a single show at that time. The first series was out 15 years ago on Greece or Cyprus. And so I was determined that this should happen. So that's how the food element came in, but really I wanted to show off Greece and I wanted to show off the particular Cyprus, my home, because nothing had been done about it. In my Greek kitchen and my Cypriot kitchen, which was a 27 minute show, only about 10 minutes of it was food cooking, actual cooking. The rest was the story of the ingredient or the story of why you're cooking it and that's the bit I love most of all. Do you think the gastronomy game in Cyprus needs to be upped so as to increase its global appeal? Unfortunately, we Cypriots, we're not proud of our product. We've got to really realise what amazing things we have. For high phenolic olive oil, you have to have over 250 milligrams per litre for it to be high phenolic olive oil globally. In Cyprus, we have one called Atsas, which is 4,000 milligrams per, per litre. It is a wonder food. It will get rid of eczema, it will help your heart, it will aid your digestion, it's, it's, it, it, it helps with pain. It's, it's a wonder food that we produce in Cyprus. And the same with halloumi. I mean, I'm gonna get into a lot of trouble here, but halloumi is made of goat's cheese. That's the ancient recipe comes from the goat's cheese that roamed the mountains. Now there are some with sheep when, on the flatter land mm -hmm. where there wasn't mountains, they would have sheep and it would then be made of sheep, but the original one is just goats. So you, you can understand it's sheep or goat's milk, but now this addition of cow's milk in order to produce volume and sometimes purely cow's milk, which is not what halloumi is about and it shouldn't be something that we promote. We should be promoting the purer, better products and set them at a premium like the Italians do. I mean, if you think about it, the Italians are fantastic at taking their products, branding it, and not letting anybody touch that recipe or do anything with it, so we could learn from them. What advice would you give home chefs who are inspired by your style of cookery? I tell you the difference between me and a chef, and I have this, I have this great argument when I'm working, especially when I'm cooking on television with, with um, chefs from restaurants or you know, uh, like I work on a show called uh, Sunny Brunch and the chef there, Simon, he's very chefy. And, and I say the difference between you and me, Simon, is that you spend hours making one plate of food with a this and a that and you take it forward and you want the whole room to clap for you. The difference between you as a chef and me as a home cook is that I slave, I cook for a whole family every day and no one's clapping for me but I serve good food every day and that's the difference. The real heroes of food are the mums at home cooking for their families. Not you chefy boy with your little thing clap clap clap. So we have, I have these great arguments with chefs about you know the different ethos of food. Um, I'm, my food is rustic, very rarely is that pretty but it tastes good and it's you know feeds you. I always say about uh, cooks is you should find a recipe that you like, especially if you're a bit nervous to cook, and follow it to the Bible and repeat it. And then once you've done that, change it. 
to what you like. So for me, I'm obsessed with cinnamon. I put cinnamon in everything. I love it, it's just my favorite spice. But you might not like that. So if you're gonna make, I don't know, my, I don't know, even Dog Mothers, I've put cinnamon in, or my Chastaliers have cinnamon in them. If you don't like cinnamon, take it out and put what you like in. So I think the thing to do when you're a home cook is to follow a recipe so you, you see the end result on the product and you see how it works and then change it to flavours that you and your family like. You know, I'm not crazy about dill, but I've got friends who love dill, so they'll put it in everything, but they'll follow my recipe just to get the steps formed, and then they'll take out the parsley, they'll take out the coriander, they'll stick dill in, and I love that. I love the fact that people change things to make it their own, because every family has their own way of doing things and their own taste that they love. Tanya, you're also an anti-aging expert, writing and giving talks on how to stay young, both internally and externally. What's your secret to staying vibrant and relevant and fighting to keep aging at bay? What you put into your body and also what you think, they're two really big things. And I remember kind of when I hit 40, 45, started doing this thing where every time I sat down, I'd go, oh, make these old lady noises. Oh, I thought, oh God, that is one thing that's got to stop because that is the most aging thing you can do is make all person noises. So that's got to go out the window. And I also always try to think of being young, what it, what it feels like to be young, not let my mind go into an old time set. I completely refuse to say I'm old now, so I can't do that. I, I refuse to, to do that. I will endeavour to do whatever I did when I was 20 and 30. I've decided I'm not going to get old. Actually, I'm going to, you know, get younger in my mind, get even more, I don't know, inappropriate. Because <laughs> you can get away with it when you're older. For me, Cyprus is home. And even though I'm British born, when I get on a plane and I come to Cyprus, it's like coming home. And it's that feeling of coming home. That's why I love Cyprus so much. And I got asked by a very snooty chef what, was, what would be my dying meal. And he was horrified when I told him that I would do a slice of toast with halloumi on top, and on top of that, honey and a sprinkle of mastichi. That would be my meal I have before I die, because I love it.